Series 13 of the Fourth Doctor Adventures has kicked off with Storm of the Sea Devils. It is the title of this first box set. It is the title of the first story in this first box set. That story is the four-parter, you know, your big chunky one, your main meat. It's all over the cover art to the point that there's not really any of the second story, Worlds Beyond, on the uh, front of the cover. And so, to give it a fair shot, we're going to be talking about Worlds Beyond first, just to mix it up a bit, because... Storm of the Sea Devils is very much the one that Big Finish is pushing, everyone is pushing, everyone is talking about. You want to hear about. what you think about. Yeah, and so we're making you wait. Absolutely. <laughs> how this is working. Uh, but also because I think it's only fair that Worlds Beyond gets a bit of time in the uh, sun. Uh, but I don't think it's as good as Storm of the Sea Devils, it's fair to say. Yeah, spoilers. Storm of the Sea Devils is the better, better story. Um... Yeah, I mean, sometimes with this dynamic, you'll end up with the sleeper hit. Mm -hmm. You know, that one that you weren't expected to be good. You sort of just bought it because it came with it anyway. Yeah. But suddenly, wow. Not so much of Worlds Beyond. This is this very much reminds me of um, In the Night, where, you know, Pursuit of a Nightjar, that's your, your main grand story. And then Resistor is kind of good. This has the same sort of feel to it, I would say. Yeah, I, don't, I quite liked Resistor, but yeah, it doesn't quite touch in the night. And yeah, this was, it's nice to have that as that, I say bonus, it is, it is a box set. Yeah. So it is, but it feels more like a bonus because of how much Storm of the Sea Devils is pushed. Uh, they know what sells, they know Sea Devils sells. Uh, but what Worlds Beyond is, is the Doctor, Harry and Naomi on their first adventure. Spoiler alert, Harry and Naomi come along for the ride at the end of Storm of the Sea Devils. Who would have thought it? It's not like we've already had uh, some unit box sets and some Seventh Doctor box sets with them post this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, that's another reason to do Worlds Beyond first. Their timeline's all timey-wimey anyway. With the yeah, resource, so so. There's a reason for it. There's a reason so. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if these were recorded in this order anyway. We yeah. know that some of the Sea Devils wasn't the first they recorded. These were done all the way back in 2019, which is crazy to think about. Mm. But Big Finish sit on their fourth Doctor releases for quite a while. They do. But yeah, basically, this TARDIS trio is going in search of a holiday. Uh, and they find someone that does custom-made holidays for each and every visitor. But, you know, it's a Doctor Who story, so it's not what it seems. There's uh, something going on in the background that shouldn't be trusted, you know. Uh, no such thing as a free lunch as the Greek legends used to go. Or yeah, I, I think if something this... looks too good to be true, then it probably is. I think this is, a, you know, a good sort of aspect to explore. I say new companions. You've got Harry, who we all know and love, but it gives Naomi a chance to sort of shine and mm. get to know her um, a bit more deeper as a character because this brings up sort of more personal um, history for her within this. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good way to flesh out your characters a bit more in their second story by showing what their ideal holiday is. Yeah. You know, it and like you say, from there it then stretches out to a bit of history and stuff and what they aspire to be, what they want to uh achieve in future. And so that's rather wonderful for both Harry and Naomi. And a little bit with the Doctor as well. It's interesting getting that insight into him as a character. Because so often with these um, moments, they'll sort of tease you with the Doctor, won't they? Mm. There's moments like in the Eighth Doctor Doom Coalition story, Absent Friends. Uh, there's a certain phone call that the Eighth Doctor gets, but we don't get to find out who was on the other end of it. It's a tease um, that was never meant to necessarily be paid off. Uh, and... There's moments like that spread across Doctor Who history. That's just the one that popped into my head first, you know, where we're sort of teased of either backstory or just inside the Doctor's character. 
Uh, whereas here, we actually get a little bit of that. Mm. Uh, as he plays chess against Alan Turing. Which I think is the highlight for me in this story. Hmm. Yeah, it's, there's some rather nice moments there. And I think Alan Turing himself is a great character to have here. Who at the same time isn't quite Alan Turing. Uh, you know, mm. but there's that question of uh, reality within this. As, you know, you're sort of asked, you know, if something believes that it is i think therefore i am you know there's that aspect uh running through this whole story and it ends on rather a nice note i think i do enjoy the little existential <laughs> moment that uh this story leaves you on uh, but hmm. at the same time sort of like i'm praising a lot of what this has ideas wise but in the execution, that's where I feel it's lacking. Yeah. Cause it, it feels it's, very run-of-the-mill. It's kind of your meat and potatoes, Doctor. You know what you're signing up for. It doesn't really break the mould. It's mm. not earth-shattering. It's, it's what you expect. There's this chance of a holiday. You know it's not going to be a good time for everyone. Mm. Uh, I mean, what would you give it out of ten? I would say a six. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Which does pain me a bit, because like I say, I love a lot mm. of the ideas that are presented here. I mean, I feel like I've spent most of this section of the review praising it, only to then go give it a fairly mundane rating. But that's just... It's how I felt after finishing it, really. Yeah. Just I mean, the cliffhanger's like, great. The little tease. It, hmm. Oh yes, I know what you mean now. Yeah. I, thought, I was thinking part one cliffhanger. What even was it? No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, there's a this box set ends on a nice little cliffhanger, which I mean, you've seen, you've all seen the news about yeah, where you know where it's going. This, uh, series is going in box set two. So yeah, that was a nice little moment. But should we dive back into the start now? Dive into yeah, some of the sea levels. Mm -hmm. um, a story what we you know we've known about since 2019, as we said. And the Sea Devils uh, don't exactly have a good track record in any other story bar the Sea Devils. You know, their big finish have been pretty weak. You know, mm. uh, the Ninth Doctor one, Poison Seas unit assembled. So the chance yeah. of having a 70s Doctor, you know, can is it the 70s Doctor? Is it the charm of that? And I think it's safe to say that this is the best Sea Devil story since the Sea Devils. Yeah, I mean, the less said about Legend of the Sea Devils, the better at this point. Yeah, yeah well, I've, I've forgotten that. But, uh, but yeah, this story, I think there was a lot of hype for it. Yeah. Maybe too much, maybe more hype than a one story can handle. But I did have a good time with it. I think mm. especially as the story went on more, I got more and more invested in it. I realised what it was going for. It is almost a James Bond story. It's sort of taking that same approach yes. as Seeds of Doom did. It I love that. It's Hinchcliffe in its approach. Yeah. I love the international feel of it, like part one. You can just picture how they would have done it in the 70s. Hmm. Yeah, I... You're off to Calcutta in the mangrove forests. And so, you know, all the crocodiles around, that swampy setting. I think it adds a lot visually. I think the sound design mm. supports that really well also. It's a treacherous environment even before you throw sea devils into it. And I love how they're revealed within it with like the village folk with their drawings of them. It feels very, it harkens back to like the Silurians, mm. um, which I, I adore that little touch. Yeah. And I mean, I mentioned a James Bond feel earlier, but it's not the Doctor who's in that role. I think. No. It's almost more Harry who gets put into that. And I think if, Worlds Beyond is more Naomi's story. This is almost more Harry's story. Not that Naomi gets shortchanged, not at all. She has some 
wonderful moments in this story. But I think Harry was where it was at for me in this mm. one. I, I, I really put Chris Nader in the spotlight. Mm. Um, obviously, this isn't the first time we've heard him as Harry, but this is a very good first impression. Yeah, if you've not heard any of um, his stories as Harry yet, this is the perfect one to start off with, you know, picking up on where things left off after the android invasion. Uh, this is taking the character beyond that and seeing what he got up to, how his second uh, tra set of travels in the TARDIS began here with a new friend in the form of Naomi Cross, who is a unit operative who's not had a chance to shine. You know, she's very capable, but has spent most of her life and career behind a desk, really, because no one um, quite, you know, it's the 70s still, or is it the 80s at this point, where a woman is sadly not given the chances she deserves to prove herself. And mm. so here she is given that opportunity and, of course, runs into the fourth Doctor along the way. And at the same time, proves herself worthy of not just being a unit operative, but also a Doctor Who companion. And I think that's rather a nice moment when the fourth Doctor really... I mean, yeah, he takes a shine to her right from the word go. But, you know, there's a moment where you know he decides, yeah, you're companion yeah. material. Yeah, uh, it's great. Rather neat. But our villain of the piece, uh, Ramesh Kamal. Mm. He's uh, a so uh, Bond villain, isn't he? With, like, yeah. the crocodiles, you know, uh, you know, trading them. Mm. And, you know, he's he's got the sort of Mr. Harrison chase feel, isn't he? You, you yeah, know, you ultimately, he's going to get his comeuppance. You're just waiting when. Because you know it's going to be gruesome. And this story does have its gruesome moments. Oh, it does. Yeah, And I think, I get sound design there. Mm. Doesn't let up, does it? No, really doesn't. So it, it fits right into that sort of Hinchcliffe feel, you know. Yeah, it's very much pushing the boundaries of perhaps what Doctor Who uh, can get away with. But I think, you know, it's important sometimes for those boundaries to be pushed, really. Mm. And it's always nice when Doctor Who can do that to make you feel ever so slightly uncomfortable, bring you to the edge of your seat. And this has those moments within it to really make for a detestable villain here, played by Silas Carson, who yeah just has that wonderful silky villainous voice, mm. really. There's a suaveness, isn't there? Yeah. I don't think his top henchman quite lives up to the Scorby mould, though. No, no, like he's no, no. sort of more of a background piece. I don't. Yeah, there's some nice little bits of comedy with him, like, "Oh, he's the eavesdropper." There's yeah. some nice bits with him and the Fourth Doctor, which I like. But I feel like that's more Fourth Doctor weighted. Yeah, really. that's the way. Yeah, that's the. There's the, not the much. Wit. Yeah, there's not much in his lines, and you know, no. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's a henchman. We're there for the main villain, and he delivers very well. Hmm. And I think there's some wonderful moments for this TARDIS trio as well, when they finally get some time alone together. That was when the story really started clicking yes. for me. Yeah, I enjoyed their interactions together and tried to work out exactly what's going on here. I, I would say it's a slow burner. I would mm. say it's sort of midway through part two. Like you say, when you get the scenes of all three of our TARDIS crew together, that's when the story really starts ramping up and firing. Like, I, yeah. I enjoyed the journey up until then, but I think that's when it started to go, oh, this is actually really good. Yeah, that's when it really started clicking. And I think, for me, even after I finished it, the more I thought about it, the more I was thinking, you know what, I did really have a good time with that. I think there is a lot that this story has to offer. And yeah, it's certainly one that I'll be going back it's... to in the near future. It's a story that strikes so many great visuals in your head. Like the sea mm. devils, you know, in this sort of marsh swamp setting. You, yeah, it fits perfectly. And it's putting the sea devils in a, in a different environment to what we've seen before and what you expect them to be in. Yeah, but one that also makes perfect sense. Yeah, you know, they're totally creatures does. that live in the water. Why wouldn't 
Um, you know, I think as David K. Barnes put in the extras, why wouldn't you have freshwater sea devils as well as saltwater sea devils? Yes, yeah. Which is a wonderful way of uh, describing it, really. And yeah, I mean, the sea devils themselves within this, uh, I think the voices are superb. They feel like an accurate recreation of what you had back in the 70s. I'd, I'd say one of them's maybe not quite 72 sea devil, but that's just me. Nah. Well, it's, but it's all, there is a bit more character to them, isn't there? Yeah, they're, they're not as like There's whispery. a reason for it. Yeah. But I think that's mainly down to the amount of more dialogue they've got. Mm. You can't sustain that um, voice. Yeah. But you still have those old sound effects as well. Yeah, you've yeah. got the old sort of scream effects. Yeah. I think even the music as well, it, it does feel that. very fourth doctor. But then there's those moments where the sea devils are very present mm. that suddenly, you know... It knows when to bring in the... Uh, is it Carrie Blyton? Uh, no, it's Malcolm no, no. Clark. Ah, uh, yeah. It knows when to bring in those Malcolm Clark moments, doesn't it? Yeah. The, the very electronic moments within it. Yeah, the bits uh, of synth. I mean, there's even one moment that does feel like a callback to the Silurians. I feel very early on, I almost imagine it as a point of view shot. Hmm. Similar to what you have when, um, you know, their unit are hunting the Silurian in the Silurians. Yeah. And you have quite a few point of view shots where you see that, you know, third eye and such. There's a moment in this where you hear the heavy breathing and the movement through. And I feel like that is us being presented with a Sea Devil's point of view. Mm. Uh, yeah. Which, but yeah, I there's... don't know whether that's... A or if it's just a coincidence but yeah i i rated it nevertheless i mean i i rate some of the sea level dialogue within this with them sort of you know eating humans and stuff like that like it's taking the horror of them the next level which is great mm. yeah it's the perfect blend of what you have with them in the sea devils and putting that into the more hingecliffe era that tom comes from here hmm so yeah overall storm of the sea devils worthy of its uh place as the title of this box set worthy of the cover art gorgeous <laughs> cover art yeah she even more gorgeous in person getting the yeah, box set really nice yeah worthy of the spine absolutely yeah, yeah. i mean you know i think it a nine out of ten actually you know when you were talking about you know not this you know listening to it and then reflecting on it I think talking with you about it, my rating's yeah. gone up. Same here. Now, so I, I, I'm going to join you with a nine. Yeah, I feel like before this review, I would have gone for an eight, but actually, yeah. Yeah, just the discussion it's invoked in us, you know, the clear joy we have of talking about this, I think it's worthy of a nine. And yeah. I would say eight out of ten for the whole box set. Yeah, I'd agree with because, that. Because, yeah, I mean, Sword of City Devils is the main meat here, it is your four parter. Uh, Worlds Beyond, while not as strong, still good story, mm -hmm. and it's half the length, so I think that works out to give it an 8 overall. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. It's all good. Yeah, well worth picking up, and hopefully so will the rest of Series 13 be. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll have to see uh, what's to come with Metamorphosis. Gotta wait until June now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like we say, cliffhanger. So yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Something uh, to keep us going there. And yeah. there'll be a review of that set as well, I assume. Oh, I imagine so. I think we're committing. Yeah, we're, we're going to do all this year. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, throwbacks as well. Loads of different videos out on the channel. So don't forget to subscribe to catch them all. Mm, along with um, news and all mm. that stuff as well. Yeah, please leave a like as well if you've enjoyed listening to us natter on about Storm of the Sea Devils, both box set and story. And yeah, we'll see you next time, I suppose. Bye-bye.